And in order to become familiar with a few more very common anions that are made with more than one element and do not form molecules but form anions, meaning they are charged, and of course since the anions are negatively charged, let's uh, familiarize ourselves with them. We have what we call permanganate, which includes manganese and oxygen, one manganese atom, four oxygen atoms, and so we're going to have a bonding structure like this. Notice that manganese is over here, which means that it has seven valence electrons. But it's trying to bond with eight oxygens. So we have four permanent bonds, and then we have three electrons left to make four additional bonds. Of course, we can't make four bonds permanently, so it makes four bonds part of the time. Since you have three electrons available, it'll make each of the second bond three quarters of the time. That means one quarter of the time it doesn't have that second bond, which means one quarter of the time the oxygen needs an electron, which means it has an effective, effective negative charge of minus one fourth for each of the four electrons for a total of minus one for the ion. So, <clears throat> hmm, this should be minus one. Now that makes sense. For a while there, I was not sure what I did. But yeah, so you have four times minus four, so we should have uh, a minus one charge on the manganese oxide ion, which is called permanganate. The next one is peroxide. Now, of course, everybody's familiar with hydrogen peroxide. Though probably all of us had a little bottle in the bathroom uh, for infections and so forth, clean, uh, for clean wounds. Kind of kids don't like it because it stings. But anyway, the peroxide ion is two oxygens joined together. They form a single bond. And so that means that each oxygen needs an additional minus one charge, a, an electron, to feel complete in its valence electrons. And so that means the ion has a total of two minus charge. We have the phosphate ion, which is PO4. That means one phosphorus with four oxygen atoms right here. Uh, phosphorus is right over here, just like nitrogen. It has five valence electrons, but it's trying to make four bonds. So the way it's set up is it makes a double bond with one of the oxygens and a single bond with the other three. It probably rotates through that on a regular basis so that all of them will have a double bond one quarter of the time and a single bond uh, three quarters of the time. But this is a snapshot picture of what it would look like, which means at any given time, Three electrons will snatch an extra, uh, three oxygens will snatch an extra electron, and the whole ion will become three minus charge. Sulfate, SO42, a sulfur with four oxygens. So we have that over here. Sulfur is this location, which means it has six valence electrons, six electrons to form bonds with. So the sulfur will form a double bond with these two oxygens, that takes up four electrons and only has two electrons left to form the bonds with the other two. Those will then be single bonds, which these oxygens then grab another electron from wherever they can to make up that last slot for the electrons. And so this whole ion will be negative two charge or two minus right there, Oop, right there. And finally, the sulfide ion, which is sulfur bonding with only three oxygens instead of four oxygens. In this case, it has a slightly different arrangement. Still, it has six valence electrons. It uses the three to make the permanent bond, but then it takes the two electrons of the three that are still available and says, I'm hanging on to those because those are in my S orbital of the third energy level and we're not going to give those up. That means there's only one electron left to form the, the second bond part of the time. So one third of the time, one third of the time, one third of the time, each of the three oxygens will bond with sulfur through a double bond, which means two thirds of the time they don't have that second bond, which means they need a negative two thirds charge uh, on average. And add three negative two thirds charge together, you'll end up with a two minus charge for the sulfide ion. So again, these are four more or five more very common uh, anions which bond with our cations in all kinds of manners, and so it's good to understand, first of all, what they're called, what their formula is, and why they have the charge on them that they do. So hopefully that helps understand what uh, these anions are that are made up from more than one element.